Okay, so uh, today I'm gonna do a bit of a opening or unboxing of the Gerber jukebox, and then uh, I'm gonna wear it around, use it for the next week or so, and then I'll kind of check in and give my final thoughts on it. So uh, out of the gate, I picked this up at Cabela's here in Edmonton for 40 bucks, which uh, regular retail on that is 70. Uh, I was a little hesitant because when you look online at the pictures, it doesn't show the handle very well. And I was worried that a common uh, mistake that they make is that they make the handle very cylindrical. And it doesn't fit in the pocket very nice. But uh, this, this appears to be quite a bit thinner. Uh, unfortunately, it's in this terrible blister packaging that I absolutely hate for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, it makes everything feel cheap. And two, you can't actually hold the product before you decide to buy it. Uh, I like the little wood or cardboard boxes they used to come in because then when you were buying it or in my case when I was selling it to people you know you could open it up have an actual look at it and you know see how it felt in your hands and you can do your own little bit of quality control on the item. Uh, for example this one in the blister pack was about the fourth one back on the shelf because the first three all had really bad separation on this scale between the frame and the scaling here so it, it's I don't know what the other side looks like I'm gambling this one looked a little better it's a $40 knife you, you get what you get in a sense um, right out of the gate what I like about this knife and why I bought it before I even open it is I've wanted something with this flat edge I think they call it a sheep foot yeah modern sheep's foot is the blade style on this so it's got that flat front end um, I just kind of like that in a pocket knife. Reminds me of those old straight edge razors. Uh, I like a liner lock, and I like something with scales. Uh, a lot of really high end knives, like for example Zero Tolerance, and a few of the Gerber ones. The the frame and everything, it's all one piece, and it's the whole side moves to let you lock it. And to me, I just same thing. It kind of feels cheap. And another feature that this has that I really like is it allows for what's called tip down carry, so that the way that the the way the pocket clip sits on it, which you can see in the picture, allows it to carry in your pocket with the tip down when it's closed. It's quickly going out of fashion. Most people prefer tip up. I like tip down, but I'm old, so... Anyhow... Just making sure we're still recording, yeah. Let's open it up and have a look. Uh, another reason I really like this and I bought it is I'm a sucker for freebies, and this includes a little handkerchief. And no matter how hard I searched online, I could not find a photo of the handkerchief. So that's a big part of the review and reveal. And now, part of the reason I hate blister packaging is that I don't want to damage the product by cutting it open. Right, let's have ourselves a look. So, first thing to come out. Very, very cheap handkerchief. Holy, that is small and flimsy. I like the pattern though. I was looking for more of a bandana style so you could, you know, tie it on or something, but it is it is quite small. But I do like that sugar skull pattern. Okay, so here we have the knife. I'm gonna say it looks pretty good. The scales fit nice. Feels good in the hand. And I've got pretty big hands. I wear an XL glove if that helps anyone. Yeah. So one thing that's gonna be real weird about this is that it's got this little knob at the top to help facilitate opening. And I'm used to one down here. So for example, I've got this CRKT. And it's got a flipper on the back. You can just kind of snap it. And actually, I don't like carrying this knife because it's way too big. But it is a good knife. It's solid. But that flipper is nice. And this is not a spring assist at all. That's an M16. Anyway, so this guy here. Oh, that's a weird reach. So you're going to have to hit it with your thumb part of the way. 
and then snap at the rest with your index finger. Seems the easiest. Or you can two-hand it. It's strange to me they wouldn't put a little knob on there, but... It opens very smooth. Feels sharp, I don't have anything handy to cut. Cut a piece of paper. Nope. <laughs> well, a little bit. Yeah, I could probably do it for a sharper edge, but I guess we'll have to see how much I like it. So taking a look at this knife, it's very clear one of their obvious inspirations is going to be your old style straight edge razor. You can see a lot of that in there, including that top flip. But this one will fold all the way back on itself so you can actually shave. Though this one's too dull to shave with currently. So if you don't quite want one of these, you can always put one of these in your cowboy boot. So. We'll see how much uh, use it gets here over the next week or two. And then I'll check back in here, splice it all together, and put it up on YouTube for you guys to enjoy. Okay, so I've been carrying this guy around for, I'm going to say about two weeks. And uh, so far pretty happy with it. But uh, maybe I'm going to go through the things I don't like about it first, just to get that out of the way, and then talk about what I do like about it. So, the only problems I seem to have encountered with it, one, this tab, if it sits just wrong in my pocket, this will actually kind of dig in when I sit down. Now that's pretty variable depending on how high you wear your pants, which pocket you put it in and all of that, but it is something to consider. Um, the other one is the fit of the scales to the rest of the knife onto the frame and such. This specific one is really good, but when I did go to buy it, I did notice a few on the shelf had a bit more separation than others in here, so there's a little bit of inconsistency there. Not the end of the world, most people probably don't care, but I'm a little bit OCD. One guy online was saying that he'd like to buy one of these and make his own set of scales out of maybe some rosewood or something like that, so that would be a nice thing to do too. Um, sticking with the scales, I noticed these ones have a lot of uh, small scratches and little rub marks. It's not a super hard material, it's just an acrylic. So, over time in your pocket, you will see some of that wear and tear and damage on them. It's not too bad, just when you kind of get that right light reflection, you'll see a little bit of marking on there. It's kind of like an old watch face. I've had this watch for about five years, and same thing, when you look at it just right, you can see a scratch here and a scuff there. So, it just, it will show its damages probably a little sooner than some of the other materials out there. Um, and really, that's all I've got for negatives for it. Um, it has the same issue that all knives have, that it's not a multi-tool, so you don't have a set of pliers and a screwdriver when you need it, but that just kind of is common sense when you're picking a pocket knife over, say, a multi-tool. You know that. Um, so that's really all the negatives I can think of. Um, so I've got a long list of things I do like about it, but I'm a pretty positive guy when it comes to gear. I can find something good in anything, so I'm probably not the best source for this, but... I like making videos, so hopefully you like watching them. So, uh, for starters, opening it, I figured it out. Uh, before, I was doing it with my thumb and then the rest with my index finger, and it struck me as a little wonky. Um, it's still not great. It's not the fastest, but I can do it now with my thumb, just in one motion. So, it's never going to be as fast as a normal flipper or an assisted open, but I can get it pretty quick now. And uh, I probably look like a weirdo at work sitting by my CNC machine just popping it open and closed over and over, getting the hang of it. Um, you can also two-hand it where you just kind of take it and slap it. But I think that's kind of silly, but it is an option. Um, sticking in the opening and closing, I really like the uh, bearing that they have in here. It's pretty smooth. Uh, it's loosened up a little bit over the two weeks, broke in a bit. Uh, I'm curious to see if over another month or two it actually gets loose. Because right now it just seems smooth. But when it opens up, it's solid. There's not much wiggle. 
between say the frame and the blade itself left and right or up and down like it is it is solid and when it closes the blade itself sits perfectly center in the frame sometimes on certain knives you'll get uh, the the blade will actually ride on one of the frame sides when it closes and I I really hate that um, and sticking with the centering the grinding and sharpening is even on both sides which I really like I've had uh, same thing cheaper pocket knives in the past where they kind of only do one side I think it's a time-saving thing on their part but uh, no Gerber went through the effort of doing both sides as you're supposed to um, what else what else what else the clip this is an issue I've had with other knives this clip is nice and solid it's an appropriate material it's thick and it sits nice in a pocket I had a pocket knife a few years ago that the metal here was too thin and a little bit on the flimsy side and it would slowly bend out over time just going in and out of pockets and the little lip here on the end was maybe a bit too big on it and eventually it was doing things like hooking on my seat belt and I'd get out of the car and I'd look back and there would be my pocket knife hanging on the seat belt still in the car and now I look like a dope so that's a nice feature that this you know just well built um, in the construction side of things this taper in the design gets a little wider towards the bottom not a normal shape for a pocket knife if you look again to compare it to say the CRKT it's got a little more ergonomic design to it it actually tapers the other way which is quite common in pocket knives this one tapering larger towards the base still actually feels very normal and natural in the hand I really like it gotten used to it I haven't had a lot of hard use on this knife I've you know had it since a little before Christmas it's now the 27th of December so I've been opening a lot of little boxes and packages over the past few weeks it's perfect for that um, I'm not noticing anything negative about not having an actual point on the knife there still is a point down here so if you need to poke into something and then cut you can still achieve that but it doesn't have say like a clip point or a drop point like most knives and I don't think that that's a problem um, the look of it uh, I showed a few guys at work they really like it got a lot of oohs and ahs I noticed that uh, online I found Gerber makes one this is the tortoise shell which is obviously not real tortoise shell um, and they have one that's a smoke design so it's more grays than browns they both look good I prefer this one to the other but uh, certainly wouldn't be unhappy with either so it's definitely a knife that looks good um, I didn't show it to anyone and they went you so that's always a, a good start and nobody's really intimidated by it I think that lack of a point this more of a they call it a sheep's foot but the cleaver style knives it's you know not a lot of guys worry about that sort of thing but I do I remember back in my university days somebody needed to open a package and I snapped open this big knife and handed it to them and they had almost half a panic attack because it's just it's a lot to take in for people who aren't familiar with it whereas this this is a little less concerning even though it's obviously equally as dangerous it's still a sharp edge and you could cut yourself but it's just it doesn't freak people around you when you pull it out of your pocket to open a package uh, overall I would say for the money it is well worth it I paid $40 Canadian for it and it is absolutely worth every penny of that regular retail on it I bought it on sale I believe was 70 even at 70 I would give it some strong consideration I might look at a few other models I know the Gerber flat iron is right around that price point I wouldn't mind handling it a little bit too just to see and compare because they have a lot of similar features in blade design but uh, no I would uh, absolutely give it some consideration and well I'll call it a buy uh, last thing to talk about is the handkerchief that came with it I don't have much of a use for a handkerchief but a lot of guys online do carry them around um, to me it just seems like more junk in your pockets which if you're into that fine what I ended up doing with mine is I made this little leather box uh, I'm terrible at leather work but uh, I just have it by the bed for odds and ends and junk that end up in my pockets that I don't need or you know just well, there are little trays or comps. I've got my wallet in here and this other knife and little 3D printed Charmander. I don't know. Clearly, very important stuff. An old straight edge that's too dull to do anything. But this handkerchief fits perfectly in this box and makes a lovely little liner. So even that has found a use. Uh, I really like that Gerber threw that in there. I love when companies are doing stuff like throwing in stickers or patches or handkerchiefs. Uh, I got a Jägermeister bandana somewhere that I just love because I don't know I just like when they throw free stuff and I'm a sucker for that 
Uh, anyway, that's all I've got. Uh, hopefully you go out and buy this knife or something similar and let me know your thoughts on it. But I'm going to keep carrying it until something else catches my eye. And then maybe eventually I'll be one of those cool guys that has ten different pocket knives and picks a different one every day. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day.